Good morning. It's January 7th, 2021, and this is Thoughts from the Word. Well, good morning. Glad to be back with you. Time for us to look at some scripture. Today we're going to look at a verse coming out of the book of Chronicles. Book of Chronicles. Uh, so if you have First Chron- uh, the Bible, turn to First Chronicles chapter 16. We're going to look at this verse, 1 verse 29, um, which comes out of the midst of David's song of thanks when after the ark had been brought into Jerusalem and placed within the tabernacle. The, te- the temple had not been built. Uh, They had the tabernacle in the center of the city, and uh, the ark was restored to the tabernacle, and and, uh, David sang this song and included this verse within the song of praise that he sang. We read it uh, as uh, the word of the Lord says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Now the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Amen. So as I mentioned, David uh, begins this song after they've brought the ark back and put it within the tabernacle. They've offered the uh, offerings. They're rejoicing uh, that the ark of the covenant is back in, in their possession, back in their control. And in the midst of this song, David calls the people of God to worship the Lord, and he shares says a few things in this verse. First, to ascribe the Lord uh, the glory due His name. The King James re- reads, "Give the Lord the glory due His name." We're to give God glory uh, that He's do that. He created us to glorify Him, and so when we worship and when we gather to worship, one aspect of our worship is to give God glory. The other he brings out here is to bring an offering and come before Him. We should never come before God empty-handed. Now, that doesn't mean we have to put money in the pay, in the tray every time it comes by or that we have to give away something that we have, but it means we need to come willing to give. Give of ourselves, maybe give of our material possessions, giving an offering, but we are to come with a willingness to give up in worship ourselves, the world around us, the things we control. Uh, earlier in the scriptures, it talks about the idols and, and, and not worshiping them. And, and so we give up our, our false worship. We give up our false beliefs. We give up uh, all these things which keep us from seeing God. And then we read, and worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Now, his holiness is perfect, uh, perfect perfection. Uh, and, and we're to worship in the splendor of that, the majesty of that, the gloriousness of that. I want us to think about that. What does What is God's perfect holiness look like? What would it look like in our lives? And how great and majestic would that be that we would be in that presence, that we've been granted admission to? into that presence, that through Jesus Christ, we are told that we will worship in spirit and truth, meaning we will come into, we will be able to see and partake of that glorious, uh, splendorous uh, holiness of God's. And that is what we uh, shoot for. That's what we're working for as we gather and we worship together corporately, but then also as we worship in private with our families, our families and our, or on our own. So think on that today. Let's hear from the Valley of Vision. Thou great and only potentate, thou hast made summer and winter, day and night. Each of these revolutions serves our welfare and is full of thy care and kindness. Thy bounty is seen in the relations that train us, the laws that defend us, the homes that shelter us, the food that builds us, the raiment that comforts us, the continuance of our health, members, senses, understanding, memory, affection, will. But as stars fade before the rising sun, thou hast eclipsed all these benefits in the wisdom and grace that purposed redemption by Jesus thy Son. Blessed be thy mercy that laid help on one that is mighty and willing, one that is able to save to the uttermost. Make us deeply sensible of our need of his saving grace, of the blood that cleanses, of the rest he has promised, 
and impute to us that righteousness which justifies the guilty, gives them a title to eternal life and possession of the Spirit. May we love the freeness of salvation and joy in its holiness. Give us faith to grasp thy promises that are our hope. Our hope. Provide for every exigency and prevent every evil. Keep our hearts from straying after forbidden pleasures. May thy will bind all our wishes. Let us live out of the world as to its spirits, maxim, manners, but live in it as the sphere of our action and usefulness. May we be alive to every call of duty, accepting without question thy determination of our circumstances and our service. Amen and amen. Let's close our, our morning together in prayer. Let's pray. Almighty and gracious God, we thank you that we do have your word and the challenges put before us. We have in your word the truths we need for salvation, but also the encouragements to come before you and give you glory, bring an offering of our lives to you and to uh, worship in the splendor of your holiness. Oh God, be alive in us and just uh, reinvigorate our worship and praise of you. Give us hearts that hunger and thirst for you, that when we gather together with the body of Christ, that we would seek to bring you all honor and glory, and that we would live our lives each day to the glory of God. Father, be with us today and protect us. For our friends and family who are sick, uh, we pray for healing and strength. For those who are mourning, we pray for comfort and peace. And for those who are working and laboring even now, we pray that you would give them wisdom and guidance and strength to do the work that you've called them to do for the glory of Jesus Christ. Be with us through this day and be glorified in us, for we give this day up to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, thank you for being with us for Thoughts from the Word. We will see you again tomorrow. May God bless.